Toyota, a brand known for its numerous and very efficient hybrids, only has one fully electric vehicle. The reason for this lays in some internal Toyota lore. You see, the brand's chairman, Mr. Akio Toyota, spelled with a D like in Star Wars, doesn't believe that EVs are the future of the automotive industry and has been very against Toyota producing an all-electric vehicle. The role of electric vehicles in the future of the automotive industry may or may not be up for debate, but the fact of the matter remains, in 2023, many automakers do offer compelling electric vehicles, and the best-selling car in the world in the first quarter of this year was the Tesla Model Y. So begrudgingly and belatedly, Toyota has launched this the BZ4X. I was scheduled to spend a week with the BZ4X over a year ago before Toyota recalled all of them because their wheels were falling off, but in that delay I was able to drive a lot of other electric vehicles that help highlight this car's weaknesses. The powertrain of this front-wheel drive BZ4X is most similar to that of the Chevrolet Bolt EUV. This car has 242 miles of range, four more than the Bolt EUV, and 201 horsepower, one more than the Bolt EUV. But while the Bolt EUV costs $38,000 fully loaded before any federal tax incentives, this BizForks costs $50,000 and does not qualify for federal tax incentives because it's made in Japan. That means that this car is priced very similarly to a Ford Mustang Mach-E equipped with the long-range battery pack and rear-wheel drive, except that vehicle has 290 horsepower and 312 miles of range. Noticeable increases over the Biz Forks. Now you might be thinking this is a much larger vehicle than the Bolt EUV, why would I compare the two? Well, while there is more cargo space, definitely, behind the second row, this excessive amount of cladding and the 8.1 inches of ground clearance on the BZ4X make it deceptively larger than it is. When I get into the second row behind my ideal driving position, I do have a lot of leg room, but headroom is really tight. I do have to slouch a little at six foot two in order to sit behind my ideal driving position because of this panoramic sunroof. And it's overall, it's just not that big of a car. The RAV4 is definitely much roomier. All right, driving the Toyota BZ4X. Now I've been a little harsh on this vehicle and I think where it excels the best is actually in terms of comfort. This is a genuinely comfortable vehicle. The ride is really composed and handles bumps and imperfections really well. I'm very impressed that a Toyota crossover of this size handles and rides this well. It's a, definitely a step up from the Ford Mustang Mach-E or the Chevy Bolt EUV. Uh, it's also very quiet in here. It feels very premium that it is so hushed in this cabin. You don't hear a lot of road noises or noises from other cars. And obviously, since there isn't an engine, you don't have like the droning sound of a CVT, which is definitely nice. And it leads to an overall premium feel in the cabin. And the interior design is also fitting of a car of its price point. I would say those materials are mostly soft touch. There are some scratchy blast black plastics lower down, but that is to be expected. And the technology is great. You do have haptic controls for the uh, climate control, which isn't great. I prefer physical buttons, but it's better than it being integrated into the screen, which Toyota had been doing for a hot sec, but they've stopped that. Uh, you get full screen wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great. I, it looks absolutely spectacular on this screen. My main qualm with this interior is the steering wheel gauge cluster setup. You have to look over the top of the steering wheel to see the gauge cluster because they put it very high and in your line of sight, which is nice. You keep your eyes closer to the road, uh, but that means the steering wheel is is really small because you need to be able to both look over the steering wheel and be able to slide your legs under it. But at six foot two, I kind of find myself still hitting my legs on the bottom of the steering wheel when I climb in and out and having to peer over the top of the steering wheel to see all of the in the inf information on the instrument cluster. And it seems like one of those things that they changed just to change. Like they could have just given it a normal instrument cluster that you look through the steering wheel and I would have had no issues with that. Uh, but they wanted this car to feel different, I think, because it's an electric car, and they just really didn't need to do that. All right, and then there's the power, 201 horsepower out of this front-wheel drive BZ4X. It's definitely not fast. If you've driven other electric vehicles, uh, especially higher horsepower ones, um, like Ford Mustang Mach-E, tes any Tesla, um, you're going to e expect a lot more out of this car than it will give you. Um, my experience with many electric cars I've driven is just neck snapping torque and super fast acceleration. The BZ4X does not have that. Again, just 201 horsepower isn't a lot. And you actually do get a little bit of torque steer in this front wheel drive BZ4X. Uh, the steering wheel will kind of pull one way or another when you are accelerating hard. The minimal horsepower mixed with this car's 
kind of unimpressive range, I think is really what I'm disappointed at. Because this car has 201 horsepower, and yet at 100%, I was seeing 220 miles of range. If you take away power, I want more range. And if you take away range, I want more power. But this car doesn't really seem to excel in either of those categories. It seems to me that Toyota designed this car to be weird, just to be weird. They were like, this is an electric car. We need to make it look weird. It has these crazy gray cladding around all the wheel wells. It has this weird steering wheel and gauge cluster setup. Uh, it, it has these fins over the rear glass. It's got a like funky design. Electric means weird. They did that with the Prius and they had success with that car, but I think because there are so many compelling EVs on the road right now, the Tesla Model Y was the best selling car in the world in the first quarter of 2023, which is like directly competes with this vehicle. So I think Toyota missed the mark on going quirky with their first full electric vehicle instead of really just creating a compelling Toyota that is also electric. If you're gonna make a future car, futuristic car, you need to give it futuristic specs and 242 miles of range, 201 horsepower are not futuristic specs, especially for a car that costs $50,000. There's just a lot of things that seem to conspire to make this car not a success. I don't really know why Toyota launched this vehicle with the specifications that it has when I think they could have given it better specs, more powerful electric motors, a bigger battery pack. Now, if you're a big Toyota fan and you're looking to take the leap into an EV, I don't think you will be disappointed pointed with this vehicle. I would definitely test drive it just to see how you feel with this whole steering wheel gauge cluster setup, but that's really the biggest difference you're going to notice between uh, this car and a normal Toyota. I think the electric powertrain isn't overwhelming in this vehicle because it is relatively underpowered compared to other EVs, and it won't be that big of a departure. There isn't one pedal driving in this car. You can turn on regenerative braking with a button on the center console, but it's a very limited center, uh, regenerative braking and you have to turn it on every single time you get into the car. So if you've never driven an EV before, this will be just like driving a gas car, except you're gonna be charging it every night instead of filling it up at the gas station every other week. In that sense, maybe Toyota has built a product that will help bring people over to electric vehicles, but again, $50,000, I really struggle to see the appeal of this car when you can buy a $50,000 Tesla Model Y or a $50,000 Ford Mustang Mach-E, which offer better performance and better range and overall more exciting packages. So that's the Toyota BZ4X. Well, it doesn't really do anything wrong, except possibly the instrument cluster. For the price, there are a lot of other cars that offer better specs than the BZ4X. That being said, if you are a Toyota or Subaru fan, the Biz Forks or the Solterra won't really disappoint you. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.